Hi, I'm Mary Esther Reed. I'm the mayor here in the town of Smyrna. And this month we celebrate 40 years since Nissan chose to make Smyrna their home. For those of you that lived here during that time, you know the change that we've seen um, over these 40 years. But for those of you that are new to our community, you might not realize what Smyrna was like before. Going through this process of getting ready to celebrate 40 years of Nissan being here, we've gotten to see lots of memorabilia and reminisce of what it was like before. And we wanted to give you that opportunity to see some of the change that has taken place. You know, when Nissan chose to make Smyrna their home, they invested $660 million at the time into um, that plant and our community. It was the single largest investment by a Japanese company at that time. Um, I wanna thank Debbie Gill for providing us some of the memorabilia and the dedication ceremony that we have today for you all. Um, I also want to thank Nissan, and the elected officials and anyone who made it possible for Smyrna to be chosen as the site for Nissan. So I hope you get to sit back and enjoy the Nissan dedication ceremony that took place in 1983. Good morning. I'd like to ask you to please stand and join me in singing our national anthem and remain standing while the Honorable John Wilder, Lieutenant Governor and Speaker of the Senate of the State of Tennessee, delivers the invocation. today. We are thankful for our country, for our government, for our heritage. We are thankful for thy creation, for the cosmos, for the order, for the law, for the harmony, for the completeness of it. We are thankful for production and an environment in which production can flourish for free enterprise, for competition, for initiative, 
for excellence. We're thankful for Nissan and the contribution that it makes to our state and our nation for the partnership between management and employees and a total commitment for the best. We give thanks to thee, God, and we pray, pray that you bless this endeavor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it, and for his sake. Amen. May be seated. Thank you, Governor Wilder. I want to welcome all of you to this very special occasion the dedication of the new Tennessee facility of Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA. In our audience today are representatives of our federal government, members of our state cabinet and general assembly, city and county officials, many business colleagues and friends, members of the media, and all of our employees. Together, we've been working toward this day since October 1980. And it's important that you're here to celebrate this accomplishment with us. At this time, I'd like to introduce the guests who are with me on the platform today. I'll ask you to hold your applause until all have been introduced. The Honorable John T. Bragg, Representative, State of Tennessee. The Honorable John B. Mankin, County Executive, Rutherford County. Mr. Curry B. Spivey, Jr., Group Vice President, Fluor Engineers, Incorporated. Mr. L. G. McGraw, President, Daniel Construction Company. Debbie Gill, Technician, Manufacturing, Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation, USA. The Honorable Mochihiko Kunihiro, Minister, Embassy of Japan. The Honorable John S. Wilder, Lieutenant Governor, State of Tennessee. Mr. Takashi Isahara, President, Nissan Motor Company Limited, and Chairman of our Board. The Honorable Lamar Alexander, Governor of Tennessee. Mr. Masahiko Zaitsu, Chairman, Nissan Motor Corporation in USA and Vice Chairman of our Board. The Honorable Ned Ray McWhorter, Speaker of the House of Representatives, State of Tennessee. The Honorable Sam Ridley, Mayor, City of Smyrna. The Honorable John R. Rucker, Senator, State of Tennessee. The Honorable Michael Driggs, Deputy Assistant Secretary, U.S. Department of Commerce. Mr. Thomas E. Smith, Chairman, Rutherford County Industrial Development Board. Mr. Daniel Shahan, President, Albert Kahn Associates, Incorporated. Next, the six Vice Presidents of our company. Mr. Jerry L. Benefield, Vice President, Manufacturing. Mr. Masuo Kyoto, Vice President, Product Design. Mr. James H. Stewart, Vice President, Finance and Administration. Mr. Shuichi Yoshida, Vice President, Quality Assurance. Mr. Alvin G. Folger, Vice President, Engineer, Retired. Mr. Wayne Wright, Vice President, Human Resources. Council Shunsaku Ono, Consulate General of Japan in New Orleans. Council General Kajichika Matano, Consulate General of Japan in Atlanta. Mr. Hiichi Hamayoko, President, Japan Trade Center. We also have employees representing all the divisions of our company today, and I want to recognize them. 
Ms. Jackie Durham, Executive Secretary, President's Office. Mr. Jimmy N. Johnson, Technician, Manufacturing. Ms. Kathy H. Jones, Manager, Human Resources. Mr. James W. Sauver, Supervisor, Quality Assurance. Mr. William H. Stone, Systems Analyst, Finance and Administration. Mr. James L. Williams, Director, Product Design. From our earliest associations with Tennessee, we have had the pleasure of working closely with Mayor Sam Ridley of Smyrna. Smyrna is his town, and he is Nissan's friend. May I present Mayor Ridley. Thank you very much. Governor Alexander, Mr. Driggs, Mr. Ishihara, Mr. Runyon, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you here to Smyrna and Rutherford County today for this big occasion, which represents the large expenditure of its type in the state of Tennessee and the largest investment by a Japanese company in this country. I sometimes wonder if I don't feel somewhat like Moses might have felt when he stood on Mount Nebo and looked over into the promised land. As I come down the connector road from I-24, traveling east, and I get to the overhead bridge and I look over here and see this magnificent complex and wonder if it doesn't look something like what Moses saw when he peeked over into the promised land, the future. I remember one of the strong remarks that Mr. Munt Runyon made when we were negotiating for Neeson to come to Tennessee in 1980. He said, I want you people at this table to know that we are not looking for a free ride. We want to pay our way. We want to become part of the community. We want to pay our taxes and we want to participate. They have done all these things. I have had the privilege of meeting many employees of Neeson and I've had the opportunity of talking with many of them in and outside of the plant. I don't believe I've ever seen a group of people that are more enthusiastic, excited, and zealous over their employment as these Tennesseans are here today. The Tennesseans that are employed by Neeson are a happy group, good citizens, concerned about our government, interested in our school systems, involved in our churches and our benevolent clubs, and they have become very active in our community. Tennesseans are the finest resources that we have. I am not a prophet, but I have a very strong feeling that we will turn out the best truck that has ever been made in the United States and better than any other truck that has been made by the Neeson Corporation. This has been a most challenging... <laughs> this has been one of the most challenging, exciting, and satisfying experiences in my life as the mayor of Smyrna. As long as we're here in Smyrna, and Neeson has leadership like Mr. Runyon and Mr. Benefield, I'll assure you that we will continue to have a cooperative and harmonious relationship, and we will not need any outside assistance to obtain our objectives and meet our goals for the future. Again, Mr. Ish Again, Mr. Ishihara and Mr. Runyon, we thank you for coming to Smyrna. We hope that we continue to have many more successful and happy years together. Thank you.
Thank you, Sam. Mayor Ridley and many of the rest of you were with us back in 1981 when we gathered in a vacant field down at the corner of our property. We have a videotape to bring you the highlights of our journey from that day in February to our celebration today, and we'd like to show that to you now. forecast calls for clear, cool skies over much of Middle Tennessee. Temperatures are expected to remain in the low 50s before dropping to the low 30s. Today's top story, groundbreaking ceremonies marking the official arrival of Nissan Motor Company will take place today just outside Smyrna, Tennessee. Expected on ceremonies for the $660 million Nissan Motor Manufacturing Plant will take place today in Smyrna, Tennessee. According, According to President, to President Ishihara, Ishihara, the Smyrna site was just February 3rd, 1981. A host of dignitaries and officials converge on the frozen Tennessee countryside just 15 miles south of Nashville. Gathering in the brisk winter air, they, along with the world, have come to witness the groundbreaking ceremony for a bold and ambitious new venture. For many, the day signifies a beginning, the prelude of things to come. For others, it is an epilogue, the final result of years of visionary planning and painstaking research. This is an eventful day, Yet a day that could easily have taken place in Georgia, or Ohio, or any number of sites scattered across the nation. But that was the past. This was now, and the new future for Smyrna, Tennessee, a sleepy little town that was about to be awakened by the arrival of the fourth largest automotive manufacturer in the world, Nissan Motor Company Limited. On this bright February morning, what so many had worked for, what so many had hoped for, had indeed happened. Nissan had come to America. Nissan had come to Tennessee. What this company will be doing is putting 2,200 jobs in Tennessee for 2,200 Tennesseans at an average of $20,000 a job. seen forever in the making, then construction of the new multi-million dollar facility seemed to take place overnight. In little more than two years, an army of 5,000 workers compiled a staggering 8.5 million construction hours, completing the massive project well ahead of schedule. Sprawling across the countryside, Nissan's new home spans two-thirds of a mile, engulfing 78 acres, 3.4 million square feet, under roof. The main facility is divided into three separate yet interrelated plants, body, frame, and stamping, where Nissan trucks first come to life, stamped from coils of steel, cab, rear body, and frame, Every truck begins its voyage here. The paint plant, 
the most technologically advanced facility of its kind. 3,000 individual checkpoints monitor virtually every phase of the entire operation from start to finish. And trim and chassis. Where Nissan trucks take on their final appearance before rolling off the line and into dealer showrooms across the nation. Dazzling technology abounds everywhere. Robots perform painting and welding tasks with amazing accuracy. Three separate computer systems monitor nearly every aspect of the facility and assembly operation, performing literally thousands of functions every minute. No less than $275 million was spent equipping this facility with state-of-the-art machinery and technology from around the world. At single ship capacity, with an annual payroll of $90 million, Nissan will employ some 2,000 people, capable of producing 10,000 trucks every month. Representing a total investment of $660 million, Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA is without a doubt one of the most modern and sophisticated automotive plants ever built. Equally impressive as the new facility was Nissan's approach to management. While other international companies had come to America to build their plants and products, they had always come bringing their own management. Once again, Nissan broke from tradition, opting for American leadership. The challenge was extended to Marvin Runyon, and he accepted. Recently retired from Ford Motor as Vice President of Body and Assembly Operations, Marvin Runyon brought to Nissan 37 years of experience in nearly every facet of the American automotive industry. As the new President and Chief Executive Officer of Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA, his presence immediately attracted other talented individuals, highly respected for their own expertise in the industry. The nucleus was now formed. The stage was set. And the message was clear. Nissan wasn't building trucks. Nissan was people building trucks. People. 20th century craftsmen. Building with the tools of tomorrow. Nissan's ability to attract highly skilled people is due largely to an unwavering commitment to each and every one of its employees. To date, $63 million has been spent on training alone. The depth and scope of this training is unrivaled. And in sharp contrast to their traditional counterparts, Nissan employees have a strong voice in their work. Communication and participation are the keys to success. Nissan excels at both. The impact of this commitment is far-reaching. Of Nissan's employees, 80% are Tennesseans. Yet with 20 different nationalities represented, there is also diversity. All working together. All sharing the same determination to build the finest product of its kind in the world. On June 16th, 1983, they would do exactly that. June 16th, 1983. The first commercial Nissan truck is poised, ready to roll off the line. 2,500 separate parts bolted, welded, and fastened together in 2,000 separate steps. Each step, each part, the proud signature of a Nissan technician. In only a matter of hours, these same technicians would be back at work producing the steady stream of trucks that would follow. But for this brief and jubilant moment, one sleek white truck embodied the promise and the prophecy of producing the highest quality trucks sold in North America. Job one, in reality.
reality was day one for a newly emerging American industry. Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation, USA. Facility. The Nissan's first American-made Nissan Facility. truck made its debut in a ceremony marking the official production startup at Nissan's new American An American company managed by Americans with American employees building an American product. Nissan. Lamar Alexander's commitment to making the Tennessee economy international in scope made Tennessee fertile ground for Nissan's investment here in Smyrna. Under his leadership, we have had excellent cooperation from all areas of state government and have developed a partnership with all Tennesseans. He is our close friend and we're grateful for his help. Lamar Alexander, Governor of the State of Tennessee. Thank you very much. The state of Tennessee is only one part of the effort that worked hard to make Tennessee's case attractive to Nissan decision makers, and the governor is only one part of the state government. Before I begin my remarks, I, I, I want to do something. I believe in giving credit where credit is due. And I think it's important for the employees especially to know that the lieutenant governor, who you met a little earlier, has given strong and consistent support to the efforts here, that Speaker Ned Ray McWhorter of the House of Representatives, from the very beginning, gave a very special and specific support, and that Senator John Rucker and Representative John Bragg have been in their leadership positions in the legislature absolutely essential to this whole enterprise. And while I've never really said it this way before, I think for the benefit of those of you who are from outside this area, and the remarks I'm about to make, I believe that I can speak without reservation for the entire state government of Tennessee. There's hardly any way to overestimate the importance of building the Nissan plant in Tennessee. It's the largest investment by a Japanese company outside Japan. It will produce one out of five of all the light pickup trucks sold in the United States. It put 5,000 construction jobs and 2,000 permanent good paying jobs into our state at a time when Tennessee was at the top 10 in unemployment and at the bottom 10 states in average family incomes. The $90 million annual payrolls will turn over time and time and time again. All through Tennessee, in barber shops and filling stations and hardware stores and small businesses and big businesses, creating thousands of jobs for other Tennesseans. Nissan is paying and will pay a lot of Tennessee taxes. Nissan hires mostly Tennesseans. Nissan helped pay for the interchange most of us drove on to get here this morning. Nissan helped pay for the water plant improvements in Smyrna. It is true that Tennessee taxpayers as a whole paid about $7 million to help train ourselves for these good jobs, but Nissan paid for the rest of the bill, and the rest of the bill was $56 million more. 
Nissan buys each year about $140 million worth of parts from 63 United States suppliers including glass from Nashville, tires from Union City, windshield wipers from Smyrna, shock absorbers from Pulaski, windows from Lawrenceburg, mirrors from Ripley, technology from Oak Ridge, and there'll be more. There are 17 Nissan Tennessee suppliers and two brand new plants, Calsonic in Shelbyville and Hoover Universal in Murfreesboro, and there are more to come. There are 220 robots at work here too, making this perhaps the world's most automated and technologically advanced assembly plans. For all of this, we are grateful to Mr. Ishihara, to Mr. Runyon, to the Nissan decision makers. Now let me say it in a little different way. There's a couple whose name is Peter and Barbara Jenkins that only few of you would know about. They had a crazy idea, kind of like I did, but theirs was a little crazier. While I was walking across Tennessee, they took six years and walked across America. They got to know this country better than anybody in our country. They wrote some books that got on the New York Times bestsellers list and made them a lot of money. They're young, they have a young family, they could live anywhere they want to live. The Jenkins now live on a farm in Spring Hill, Tennessee, not 30 miles from here. Alex Haley, who constantly travels the world, has a new home in Norris, Tennessee. Even George McGovern, who seems to constantly inspect every state every four years, has a new home in Sevierville, about 20 miles from where I'm from. People are moving to Tennessee at the same time Federal Express in Memphis and Hospital Corporation of America in Nashville have grown up here. In East Tennessee, Eastman is expanding, spending about the same amount of money that Nissan is spending here. And Alcoa is thinking of doing just the same thing. And we all have heard that Mr. Ishihara and Mr. Runyon and the Nissan decision makers over a six year period of time looked at virtually every state in America before putting their roots down in Rutherford County. That sends signals around the world that good living and high-tech jobs go together in Tennessee, perhaps better than almost anywhere else. Some people think it's a little strange that Tennessee has captured more Japanese capital investment than any other state. It's nearly $1 billion at 22 locations from Knoxville to Memphis. Now on the whole, that's hardly 1% of all the manufacturing investment in Tennessee, but it's more Japanese manufacturing investment in any, than any other state. Our farmers, and there are plenty of them in this area, have understood for a long time that Japan is important to us. Japan is the best overseas customer of the Tennessee farmer. And the Tennessee farmer has learned to sell nearly 40% of what he grows outside the United States. That turns Japanese yen into Tennessee dollars for Tennessee pockets. We understand in Tennessee, the Tennessee leadership does, the Tennessee farmers do, the Nissan employees do, and many Tennesseans do, that the Japanese manufacturers are going to be making in the United States what they sell in the United States, and we want this to be a welcome home for them. 22 of them already hire 6,000 Tennesseans, putting even more dollars into our pockets. Tennessee businessmen and women are now understanding that by 1990 or even before, it will be as easy and as common to trade those Tennessee goods and services in Tokyo and Osaka and Kyoto as it is in Chicago and New York and Atlanta. Japan and the United States produce three of every $10 produced in the world. And that trade will put a lot more money in the pockets of this state, of the working people of this state, if we're wise enough to take advantage of it. The world is changing. 
Someone said the other day, all the balls are up in the air. Before those balls come down, we can do some things to get to the head of the line. We must make our schools better, learn about computers, get new job skills, and capitalize on our new relationship with America's largest trading partner, Japan, which is a better relationship than any other American state has. And these new relationships won't be all work for us either. Tennesseans who've lived, worked, and visited in Japan, including nearly 400 Tennesseans who work at this plant, have learned how much alike the people and places halfway around the world can be, how much alike they are to our Tennessee people and places. The maple leaves in Japan are turning red right now, just like ours are. Their cherry blossoms bloom when our dogwoods bloom. Our state flower, the iris, is the favorite flower of most Japanese. In Kyoto last week at a conference of 500 Southerners and Japanese business people, along with five Southern governors, the opening of this plant was the topic of the day. We Tennesseans were feeling mighty proud. One fellow from another state said he was sure that Nissan trucks made in Smyrna would be just as good as Nissan trucks made at the plants in Japan. Well, we set him straight pretty quick. We told him, and we believe, that Tennessee employees will make Nissan trucks better than Nissan trucks are made anywhere in the world. Made in Tennessee means quality. There's one last thing, and I would like to say it if I would be permitted to on behalf of four and a half million Tennesseans to about 2,000 men and women who work here and who are seated right over here. The Tennessee men and women who work at this plant have a lot more riding on their broad shoulders than the success of this plant. Their success here has a lot to do with how well all of Tennessee succeeds in the next few years. We're proud of you, we have confidence in you, and we're counting on you. Good luck. Thank you, Governor Alexander. Senator Howard Baker and Senator Jim Sasser had planned to be with us today, but an important vote on the Senate floor necessitated their remaining in Washington. Our Congressman Albert Gore Jr. also had legislation he is sponsoring scheduled for debate in the House Commerce Committee today. We're grateful for the support that these outstanding leaders have given Nissan, and we look forward to continuing our close relationship with them as we go forward from this day. Senator Baker has sent a telegram, which I would like to read at this time. Dear Marvin, I regret that my Senate duties prevent me from joining in the dedication this morning marking the opening of the new Nissan plant in Smyrna. It has been my pleasure to work with many officials of your company to make today's dedication possible. I am pleased that Nissan selected Tennessee for this manufacturing facility. I know that you have already found and will continue to find people of our fine state extremely hospitable and this is a good environment for such an endeavor. I also want to acknowledge the excellent job of Governor Alexander and his staff in bringing new industry to Tennessee. Again, my best wishes as you begin this prosperous adventure in Tennessee. Sincerely, Howard H. Baker, Jr., United States Senate. We also have a telegram from Senator Sasser. Dear Marvin, I want to extend my heartiest congratulations on this historic occasion. Nissan USA is a great addition to Tennessee's industrial community, and the citizens of our state are proud of your accomplishment. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you to celebrate the opening of the Nissan plant. 
The Senate is in session, and I must remain in Washington to vote on critical issues. The partnership with our Japanese friends is a landmark in international relations, a meaningful step toward greater economic international relations, not only for Tennessee, but indeed for the world. I wish you well in the years ahead. I am confident that the Smyrna plant will be one of Nissan's finest achievements. It will also be an integral and welcome part of Tennessee's industrial community. Jim Sasser, United States Senator. Our dedication today helps to underscore the growing economic cooperation between the U.S. and Japan. At this time, I would like to introduce the Honorable Muchihiko Kunihiro, Minister of the Embassy of Japan, who brings us a greeting. This is an occasion of joy, hope, and high expectation. This is an occasion of sharing the feeling of togetherness and mutual commitment between the peoples of this country and Japan. I know that Ambassador Okawara wanted, to, wanted very much to attend this memorable ceremony. However, he is now back in Japan for the preparation of the President's visit in November, so I wish to read the Ambassador's message on his behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, although I cannot be with you today, I wish to let you know how pleased I am that this, is, this occasion has come to pass. The new location of Nissan in Smyrna is truly a memorial event. I especially wish to thank Governor Alexander, Speaker McWhitter, Senator Rucker, Mayor Ridley, and all of you who have made Nissan's new home in Smyrna a reality. I recall that it was back in 1980, during the height of the friction between the United States and Japan over automobile imports, that Nissan announced it would invest in the United States and that it would locate here in Smyrna. I imagine that there must have been a great deal of diligent work on the part of both U.S. and Japan, Japanese citizens, in the years both before and after the announcement. During the course of that work, there were undoubtedly a number of difficulties to overcome. Nonetheless, I have heard that the first American Nissan truck rolled off the assembly lines a full two months ahead of schedule. This fact is a clear indication that such difficulties could be resolved through the dedication of all the peoples involved, especially through the cooperation between management, labor, and the local community. I would like to note today a most welcome trend that is growing in both the United States and Japan. That is a heightened awareness of the importance of investment between our two countries. In this context, the investment of Nissan here in Smyrna is truly significant. It, may, it marks the advent of an era of mutual commitment at an unprecedented level. Such a commitment results only from a common belief in free and open trade. Investment has a myriad of different effects. One is that it accelerates mutual understanding among people. The Nissan plant here in Smyrna is now beginning to bear fruits of the many years of cooperative effort in that there is an increased understanding among all those involved in its planning and operation. In the years ahead, we all look forward to a deepening of that understanding and to its en enrichment of U.S.-Japan relations as, as a whole. I wish to congratulate everybody involved in this most successful 
successful venture, and I wish you all good luck and success in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Kunihiro. Our parent company, Nissan Motor Company Limited, under Mr. Ishihara's leadership, has grown in international prominence as the foremost Japanese multinational automotive company. He has provided us with access to the resources and technical expertise from our parent company, and at the same time, has allowed us the freedom to develop our new American company with the best of practices and technology from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to introduce to you the president of Nissan Motor Company Limited and the chairman of our board, Mr. Takashi Ishihara. Thank you, Ms. Lanyu and Reverend Alexander, all and guests, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you greetings from various NISA organizations around the world and join me in welcoming the newest member of the Nissan family, Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA, when I was president of Nissan Motor Corporation in USA, our American marketing arm in the early 1960s, I dreamed of the day when Nissan would manufacture vehicles in the United States, the reality we see here in Smyrna today far exceeds those expectations. First, let me express my deepest appreciation to the many distinguished speakers who have preceded me today. Your support and encouragement along with that from so many others who are assembled here with us today has immeasurable value and meaning for all of us who are associated with Nissan. I offer my warmest congratulations to Mr. Lanyon and every employee of Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation in USA in the past three years, all of you have faced many challenges in construction this magnificent facility and in developing a new organization. We at NISA are extremely proud of your deep commitment exceptional teamwork and profound enthusiasm for mastering your new jobs. The NISA track, which we are now building in this plant, has been a successful product for Nissan in the U.S. market. For the past quarter century. 
this new American manufacturing subsidiary now allows us to be even more responsive to our many U.S. customers. And equally important, this company enables us to contribute significantly to the U.S. economy through new jobs opportunities for Americans and through new business associations for the many American companies with whom we are doing business. Rounding this major manufacturing venture in the United States coincides with the celebration of Nissan's 50th anniversary this year. Nissan is firmly committed to accelerating its international growth and to continuing our leadership position among Japanese manufacturers in overseas ventures. We look ahead to the next half century with a renewed determination to sharing our experience and strengths to benefit the people of the world. Again, my thanks and congratulations to each and everyone of you who have taken a part in the occasion which we are celebrating today. The Nissan organization around the world will be watching your progress with pride and with the best of wishes for many years of successful operations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ishihara. In our company, we consider our employees to be our most valued resource, and their welfare and satisfaction is our most important priority. Today, Debbie Gill, a technician in the paint plant, will speak on behalf of all of our employees. Debbie Gill. Distinguished guests and fellow employees, it's a thrill for me to be on the speaker's platform today, and I'm honored to represent our employees. This dedication ceremony means a lot to us who've helped Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA reach its difficult and challenging goals. It's an historic event for the company, as well as a milestone in our own lives. Mr. Ishihara and Mr. Runyon, I speak for all the employees when I say thank you for giving us the opportunity to work for a company like Nissan. We have a unique opportunity here because our management really does care enough to listen and takes time to talk with us. We feel that Nissan really is a great place to work. I also want to thank our Japanese advisors who've been here helping us get started. They're excellent teachers and they've had to leave their families to come to Smyrna. I want to thank them by saying, Watashi tachi wa itsuma demo minasami no noko shita shinsetsu o wasuramasen. We 
We've worked very hard to get the plant ready to build trucks. In fact, some of us began long before the plant was finished. I can remember wading through five inches of mud to get to my work area in the plant. It's nice to have everything finished, and we're proud of our new facilities. When we build a truck, we work on one part of it without seeing the rest of it. Now it's gratifying to see all the pieces fit together. All of us have made a commitment to do our best. I know in my work group, we try to give more than 100% to get that extra quality truck. It's really something to ride by a dealership and see our truck sitting there. I know that there's a little bit of me in every one of those trucks, and it makes me proud. My children now watch for Nissan trucks on the road and say, Mommy, did you help paint that one? I know all our families take pride in our accomplishments. I've lived in Rutherford County all my life, and in fact, you can see my parents' home from the back of this LCL dock. I remember the cows grazing on this field just like you saw in the pictures. It's been amazing to watch this plant grow from the ground up every day, and we're proud to be a part of an organization that's brought so many good things to Middle Tennessee. Thank you. We strive to be a people-oriented company, and we think we're succeeding. Debbie and all our other employees are highly skilled, well-trained, and they work together as a team. We pledge to continue to create a work atmosphere that makes people want to come to work each day and do their best. A good example of our teamwork at Nissan is seen in the valuable assistance we here in Tennessee have had from members of our Japanese launch assistance team. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone in the audience today who is associated with the JLAT to stand and be recognized. A big factor in our deciding to locate our facility here was the quality of life we found in Tennessee. In our initial announcements, we told the elected leadership of Tennessee that we wanted to contribute to Tennessee, both in relations with our employees and in becoming a good corporate citizen. We feel that we've been rewarded by our choice to locate here. The assistance given by Governor Alexander and the Tennessee General Assembly has been instrumental in making Nissan's investment in Tennessee successful. We want to assure Governor Alexander, the General Assembly, and all Tennesseans that we will work overtime to continue our commitment to this state. We had a very tangible example of our determination to do this last week when we announced our United Way results. 97% of our employees participated in the drive, and pledges represented a 145% increase over the previous year. I'm very proud of that record and of the concern that our employees have for the welfare of our community. We also said that we hope to stimulate the economy by providing jobs and doing business with local companies. I'm very pleased that we already have 42% domestic content in our trucks, which is four points higher than our original 38% target, and we pledge to increase domestic content as quickly as we can find additional qualified suppliers. We've received many expressions of good wishes from around the world today, and I want to thank everyone for making this a day that we will always remember. Many of you have played a vital role in bringing together the best in human effort and resources to build the most modern automotive facility anywhere. 
The results of all these efforts are new jobs for American workers, new understanding and cooperation between Japan and the United States, and a new era for international automotive manufacturing. So today, I want to speak for all of us at Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA as we commit ourselves again to the one goal we have in this company, which is to build the highest quality vehicle sold in North America. Many contractors have helped to make today possible by their outstanding performance in constructing this facility with the highest standards of excellence two months ahead of schedule. To recognize their efforts, we're presenting each of them with a certificate of appreciation. I'd like to ask Les McGraw and Curry Spivey on behalf of Daniel Construction Company to accept the certificate for Daniel Construction and symbolically for all the others who will receive similar certificates. Would you come forward? Thank you very much. Governor Alexander, platform guest, ladies and gentlemen. I've just returned from a short trip to Japan. We spent time in the ancient city of Kyoto, then took the bullet train to Tokyo. When a visitor visits Kyoto, he can quickly see the appreciation that the Japanese people have for the old and the revered. You get on the bullet train, you go to Tokyo, and a visitor can quickly sense the appreciation that the Japanese have for the modern, the progressive, the aggressive, and the new. And I think these traits the people of Tennessee understood very well when the project began. In a moment, you'll go through a facility and you'll be impressed with its size, 175,000 cubic yards of concrete, 91 miles of pipe, 190 miles of conduit, and 600 miles of wire. But these things do not a successful project make. Successful projects, outstanding projects, are made by people. And it is on behalf of these people, the Nissan project team, the Daniel company, the subcontractors, the design consultants and other consultants, and the project suppliers, that I accept this certificate. It is also, Mr. Runyon, on behalf of these people that we express to you our deep appreciation for being allowed to participate in such a significant project. Thank you. To further commemorate this occasion, we have commissioned a plaque which will hang permanently in our lobby as a reminder this day. It reads, dedicated on Friday, the 21st of October, 1983, to producing the highest quality vehicle sold in North America. And it's signed by Mr. Ishihara, Governor Alexander, and myself. At this time, I'm gonna ask Mr. Ishihara and Governor Alexander to join me in the unveiling. program, we invite you to have lunch and tour our facilities. Uh, for our guests on this side, they'll exit through that door to go to lunch. And then after lunch, trams will be available to shuttle you to the beginning of the tour route. I also want to remind you that we'll have tours on Saturday for the, our Nissan families. 
and tours open to the public November the 1st through the 4th, beginning noon until 7 p.m. At this time, I'd like to recognize the Tennessee College All-Star Band under the direction of MTSU Band Director Joe Smith. Your music was great, and we're going to hear more from you in just a minute. And now it's my pleasure to end our program this morning by introducing our Tennessee product. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA Parade of Trucks.
We'll conclude our program by singing America the Beautiful. Emergency.